One of the moves I want to talk about, a move that I think is interesting, the Minnesota Vikings uh, decided to sign Marcus Davenport to a one-year $13 million deal. If you look at certain stats, such as his sacks, you see that he just had a half a sack last year, so that's obviously not good, but when you get into, uh, I think, better stats, it starts to look a lot better for Davenport. If we look at pressures over the course of his career, he has 95 pressures in the 2,365 snaps that he has played in the NFL. That's about 40 pressures per 1,000 snaps. That's a good ratio. That's something you, you look towards. We're actually talking... Uh, you know, just shy of elite levels of per 1,000 snap pressures. He's been very good at generating pressure consistently. Also, if you look at his pro football focus grades, he's consistently graded well. Only one year below 70, and that was 69.7 in his rookie year. Since then, he's posted multiple 80-plus grades, and he's, again, consistently been over 70 in the pass rush category, which is you know what a lot of people look at when they're looking at edge rushers. The, the negative is he doesn't get a ton of snaps, right? He tends to float around 500 snaps, which is not nothing, but, you know, for a guy who you're paying double-digit millions of dollars for, maybe you'd like to bump that up, and maybe Minnesota will. But, like, let's start off with this play. What's going to happen here is you see where he is on the field. This is going to be a stunt. So you have the interior defensive lineman. He's going to run into the Bengals' uh, tackle, and then you're going to have Davenport go up against the guard. Watch how one this play begins. I think Cincinnati does a pretty good job, I would say, of reading this well and passing each player off to where they still have an offensive lineman on each defensive lineman. Again, part of what makes stunts so effective is it can cause confusion for offensive linemen and get guys out of position, but that's not really the case here. However, there is one slight advantage Davenport has, and it's that the guard he's going up against is slowly shifting towards the left side of the screen because he had to get over there to make sure he was in position to block Davenport, and Davenport's going to use his strength and use that momentum to his advantage. Watch him really push the guard over, and he's able to, again, create pressure on Joe Burrow. A lot of times, you know, that's all he was able to do last year. Like I said, he only had half a sack, but again, you know, there's more to football than uh, sacks, and there's more to being a defensive lineman than sacks. A lot of times, sacks are fluky, and sacks come down to, did you happen to have a teammate who had good coverage behind you, and that allowed you to be able to have time to get to the quarterback? Or maybe you had a teammate on the defensive line also get a quick pressure, and that forced the quarterback towards you, things like that. There's a lot of luck involved in sacks, less luck involved in pressures, which he generates very effectively. We can talk about that half a sack uh, for a second. What's going to happen here is it is Davenport going up one-on-one -on -one against a guard. Yes, a guard. He will play on the inside as well. I think that's probably part of what Minnesota likes about him is he is a versatile player who can play not just as an edge, but also as an interior defensive lineman. There's a lot of value in that. And again, watch him just really just use his strength here. He's going to overpower the guard and be able to get to Kirk Cousins and, you know, along with Cam Jordan, and that was his half a sack last year he can do this and really he can do it consistently again don't let the sack, sack numbers fool you too much because he does do this consistently and he has had years where he's put up a lot of sacks I think last year was an exception and I wouldn't read too much into it but also going over here I want to be clear he is not just a pure bull rushed kind of guy he can move as well there's a reason why the Saints gave up multiple first round picks to be able to draft him because he is a very unique talent and this is going to be an example of of what he can do well. Going up one-on-one -on -one against a left tackle. Watch how one this play begins. You see that, again, he's going to try to use his footwork. Go to the outside and then go to the inside. That's the move he's trying to pull off right here. You see how far that right, right leg is extended. He's going to get his power from that leg. Watch him be able to sidestep and get over to Cousins. Forces uh, pressure, which forces a throw to nobody because of the fact that, you know, Davenport was able to do that. Again, these are the values of pressure. Sometimes you didn't actually impact the score sheet other than, you know, if you look at advanced statistics like we do, but, you know, uh, there's other ways that it still impacts things and can help your team win. Also, I think he's a high motor player, which listen, there's value in that as well. Right there is where he is at. Watch how one display begins. Watch him kind of fall down, which is not ideal, but hey, it happens. It's football. It's, you know, every now and then you get in these situations, but watch what he's going to do. Watch him quickly get back up and he's able to lunge forward and make a tackle. So McCaffrey just picks up four yards on that play. 
Again, you know, not a highlight real level play from Davenport necessarily, but I still like to show it because I like to see what guys do when things go wrong as well, not just when things go right. And he's a high motor player. He has high energy and that obviously helps. Now, again, uh, maybe easier to have a high motor when you only play 500 snaps, but still in those 500 snaps, he did well. And it gives me hope that if they bump that up to 700, 800 snaps, he could still have the energy to do so. I just think it's an interesting move and one that I really am a fan of. You know, I know that the Vikings are a lot more of an analytically inclined team than a lot of other teams are. So it makes sense that they would value Davenport higher than other teams do. It also is interesting that because of Davenport's kind of lack of box score stats, he doesn't really have the uh, the reputation that maybe he deserves and doesn't, uh, you know, isn't able to get a long-term deal that perhaps, uh, you know, he would have gotten had he had the exact same season other than, you know, put up seven sacks or something like that. So for me, he is someone that I definitely look at as a, a valuable piece that uh, I think is underrated. And for the Vikings, you're realistically getting a one-year deal out of him. Well, yes, then you have the option to, uh, I would assume, tag him unless there was a uh, clause in the contract uh, not allowing that. But I would assume you have the franchise tag option and you have the option to just go out and pay him if he plays well for you next season. You know, the reality is you're getting one year of cheap production for a player his caliber, in my opinion. In my opinion, for how much the NFL values edge rushers, him only getting $13 million is an absolute steal. I think there's consistently edge rushers that have shown nowhere near what Davenport has shown that get significantly more than what Davenport has received. But again, it's the sacks thing, which to me, I don't think is a big deal because you know, again, I watch his tape. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy who is a bad finisher or, who, or like, you know, he'll get into the backfield, but and can't bring a quarterback down. That doesn't seem like who he is. I think it's literally just a luck thing, which happens. And again, you don't think about, you wouldn't think it would happen playing for a team like the Saints that do have a lot of talent around him. But I, I think that that was the case. And sometimes we look for explanations when the reality is, Football, you know, there's just a lot of different players and things are going to be a little bit random and you're going to have, if you have enough edge rushers, you're going to have some good edge rushers not get a ton of sacks just randomly by happenstance. And while I can't say for certain that that's the case for Davenport, uh, it seems likely. Again, the question could be how much value are you really getting out of this signing for the Vikings? You get the two main things. The The first one, of course, being that you get Marcus Davenport for a year. That's obviously very good. The other thing is if Davenport does show up and have a 10-sack season and now teams are ready to pay him the long-term deal, you're in a situation where you can potentially, uh, you know, you have the, your foot in the door already. Uh, and listen, if it turns out that there is actually something off and maybe when he, he, you try to bump up his snap count, turns out he can't really handle that workload. Or if it turns out that he actually isn't very good and the pressures were the fluky part, not the sacks, which I doubt, but you know, is a possibility. Well, then you just have it for one a year deal and you're totally fine for the next year. So uh, I don't know. For the Vikings, they're a team that they're trying to be competitive. Last year, they did win a bunch of games. Say what you want about maybe it was a bit fluky. Maybe they weren't quite as good as their record indicated. They won a bunch of games, and maybe with Davenport, they would have beaten the Giants and at least gotten to the next round. I don't know, but uh, it's an interesting move. So yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.